The day's finally here to talk about Pokemon Gen 9. The reveal of Scarlet and Violet was a surprise to me and my brother when the first trailer dropped early this year, and it kinda threw a wrench in our plans for raiding all the Pokemon. We knew we'd get to it eventually, but since we're right in the middle of this Pokemon raiding series, we also figured we could skip straight to Gen 9 since it's fresh on everyone's minds. With over 100 new Pokemon and a structure not yet seen in the mainline series, Scarlet and Violet looked to be interesting at least. And while its launch has received, shall we say, mixed opinions from fans, we're not here to talk about the games themselves. Rather, we're here to discuss all the new creatures introduced in this generation. That's right, and if you've seen our previous videos where we've tackled everything up to Generation 4 right now, you know what to expect. We'll be rating all 105 new Pokémon from Gen 9 on a scale from 1 to 10 based on their designs, usefulness in battle, etc. As a reminder, region-specific forms do get their own rating, but no separate ratings for form differences unless they're a fusion. Oh, and before we begin, while our script is mostly spoiler-free, there will be some late-game footage playing throughout the video, so if you haven't beaten Scarlet or Violet yet and you want to avoid seeing that, well, you've been warned. Let's get to the ratings. While Sprigatito is my least favorite starter from Gen 9, it is still a pretty cute little critter. A pretty cute cat starter. I hope that this one doesn't stand up. What Floragato loses in cuteness points from Sprigatito, I think it makes up for in coolness points. And it stands up. Okay, I guess this joke doesn't make as much sense since we're doing this video before Gen 7. I think Miascarada is a little too showy for me, but I do like the darker color scheme, not surprising since it's part dark type. Okay, Miascarada isn't all that bad, but I think it leans a bit too much into the suggestive humanoid category with the likes of Pokemon like Lopunny or Sarina. Honestly, I didn't pick Fuecoco as my starter, but it's such an adorable little doofus that I think he might be my favorite from this gen. Fuecoco is my perfect little dumb idiot child. Going into this generation, I wasn't entirely set on a starter choice, but the opening of the game sold me on him. The Flame Sombrero is awesome, but everything else about Crocolore kinda loses me. Eh, I'm not too big on Crocolore. Something about the hat and the vest design on its stomach just don't sit very well with me. While I think the white is just a tad bit overbearing, Skeledurge is still a badass Pokemon. Skeledurge is pretty cool and I was glad to have picked Fuecoco not knowing anything about any starter's evolutions. I instantly knew I was gonna pick Quaxley the second that first trailer dropped, and I'm glad I did because this little anime Donald Duck is pretty great. Quaxley is actually pretty cute. If I was given less time with the starters in the opening of the game, there's a good chance I would have lent this way over Fuecoco. I don't mind the downgrade too much, but I think that Quaxwell hit that middle starter weirdness bump pretty hard. A bit worse than Quaxley, but still a solid design nonetheless. Again, a bit too showy for me, but maybe it's because I used this one, I've actually very much come around to Quaquavel. You go, little ducky. What a downgrade. I would have been so disappointed if I had picked Quaquavel over Skeledurge. This Biggie Piggy is a pretty good Pokemon, even if it's a very simple design. Yep, it's a pig. There's nothing here to really write about. Oink Cologne is just barely the better creature over Lechonk, and yeah, it is just basically a pig, but I don't know, I like pigs. Sue me. Eh, not a huge fan. I don't love pigs as animals, and these designs don't even really do them justice. Good concept, but the actual design of Tarantula just doesn't really work for me. I always called this thing Tarantulorb since I kept forgetting the name of this while playing. I'm even less of a fan of Spydoffs because it's just incredibly boring. It's your regular Route 1 bug type that evolved early and falls off mid to late game. It's got a pretty unique design though, even among spider Pokemon. Nimble's a pretty cute little bug, but I've already had so much trouble fighting this thing for seemingly no reason. So, you know, negative bias there. It's kinda cute I guess. Grasshoppers are an interesting choice for a bug as well. This is actually a really cool bug Pokemon, a rarity for the type I find. Love the dark colors too. Okay, this is actually really cool. Also, I thought this was a bug steel type when I first saw this and Nimble. I don't care if the electric rodent archetype has been done to death in Pokemon already, Pommy is still cute as hell. Whoa, it's the Pikachu. 
This is just pommy, but four legs good, two legs better, and I won't award points for lazy designs. Whoa! Pikachu stood up! Well, it's definitely more of an evolution than Pomo, I actually don't care for a lot of the changes that Pomod undergoes. Whoa! Standing Pikachu turned into Standing Raichu! The subtle differences make this just a little bit worse than Johto Wooper, but it is still a cute, squishy little boy. It's the little whoopy boy, but this time he's poop colored. Pooper. Maybe biased because I also use Claude Sire all through my Scarlet playthrough, but hell, I still love this guy. I can't believe that they just took Quagsire, painted him Paldean Wooper colored, and rotated him, and they got away with calling it a different Pokemon. Tandem Mouse is adorable. That's all it needs to be, and it excels at being a cutie. While the individual design is nothing interesting, the fact that there's two of them as one Pokemon is neat. What if Tandem Mouse, but they fucked? I prefer Family of Four form because that means they fucked more, and I respect that. The name is great, and the fact that there's now four, or three, of them is pretty cool. I didn't think I'd like this given my thoughts on Mega Kangaskhan, which don't exist yet as of recording this. I do prefer Family of Four form, personally. I'm not gonna say that petting an oily, doughy dog would be pleasant, but Fido still deserves every single pet. The goodest of good boys this generation. I was initially hesitant to give Doc's Bun the full 10 points, but after really looking at it, I really, no pun intended, warmed up to this guy and his cute little knots. And it probably smells great. The best of the best boys this generation. Generic cute ball, but not horrible. I don't know, it's not that cute. Maybe it's the scared anime face going on? Actually makes a lot of tiny improvements over Smoliv that count for a lot. Alright, this is better. Doliv is quite a bit cuter than its pre-evolution. It took me a little bit to get used to Arbolova's design, but once I did, I fell in love with it. It retains a lot of the great features from its previous forms, and the olive buds are a nice touch. The olive vine slash wreath design is actually pretty cool for this one. You know, I'm not normally a fan of designs clearly based solely on a name, but man, this one is just too perfect. I like blue plumage the most because, I don't know, I like blue. Here's a design that would have fit better in Alola, and I wish there were more color options, but it's still a really good design for a parrot. If there was a red plumage, that one would be my favorite, but since there isn't, I'm choosing white plumage, as that was the first one I found and used in my playthrough. This is just a Super Mario Galaxy power-up. It's just a salt rock, nothing interesting about it. This is just a Minecraft mob. This should have been called Knackle Stackle. This is just a poor design. It's certainly unique design-wise, but not really that good. It's awesome seeing a completely different design related to such an iconic Pokemon, but even disregarding that, I really like Annihilate. Something about this design really sticks out to me, at least compared to Primeape. Oh, and uh... Dead. Monkey. Aw, I actually love this little guy. He's so cute. It's not bad, though I spent a good 75% of my Pokeballs trying to catch this when I first encountered it and I didn't even end up using it since I had Foycoco as my fire type. Alright, Armor Rouge isn't that bad, but man, that gold plating is stupid. Again, not too bad, and although I'm not a fan of the yellow armor, I think it's a bit better than Charcadet. Now this is what I'm talking about. It's a badass upgrade, and even with the different color scheme, it carries over a lot of awesome traits from Charcadet. I prefer this design to Armor Rouge, but it reminds me a bit too much of Gallade. More generic cute round spheres. He's so cute. Though I thought this was like Paldean Time Pole when I first saw this. I don't hate Belly Bolt, but nothing about it appeals to me in the slightest. We've entered the territory of a Pokemon looking more like an early JRPG enemy. Watro looks like it's seen some shit, man. This gives me Fletchling vibes, which is a pretty good thing. We need more not normal flying early game bird Pokemon. They actually made a lot of great improvements for Kilowattrel, and while the design is simple, it does a lot without getting too eccentric. I'm not big on the seabird design, at least not for an electric type. I'm cool with new regional evolutions of old Pokemon, but just stitching two Dunsparce together and calling it a day is too lazy for me. 
I don't care for either form, but I'll guess I'll give it to two segment form because there's less of it. I really like how Game Freak decided to give some love to some returning Pokemon in the more recent generations. And although the Dunsparce is silly, it's just a bigger Dunsparce. I think I prefer three segment form because it's just more the Dunsparce. Alright, this redesign I can actually get behind. I think it looks different enough to be given a pass. Plus, it looks like it's wearing a onesie. A definite improvement over Girafferig, and once again, Game Freak gives some love to a mostly forgotten Pokemon. Cute dog, and I love the scared and putting up a tough front face, but, you know, it is just a dog. He's just a little pupper that's too angry for his own good. Once again, it's just kind of a dog. Though, I will say it's also the center of the saddest storyline in Scarlet and Violet, so it resonates in that regard. I'm not really a fan of large dog breeds, including Mastiffs, but Mabostiff carried me so hard through the latter half of the game. Also, spoiler warning, the Titan questline almost made me care for Arvin, at least for his Mabostiff's sake. I really love the colors of Shrudel, yet it looks a little too goofy for me with its tongue and pudgy body. Poison Normal is an interesting type combination, but I thought that this was a bug type at first sight. With the same beautiful colors and a very striking body design, I was instantly enthralled with Grafii when I first saw it, and I think it's a standout Pokemon from this generation. I don't love this, but it's certainly different than any other monkey Pokemon we've seen up to this point. I know it's just Tauros, but Shadowified, but I actually think that makes it look a little cooler. Honestly, all the different Paldean Tauros forms are pretty similar, so I'll say the Blaze Breed form is my favorite. I don't like it as much as Cantonian Tauros, but it's not bad at all. I think I prefer the Blaze Breed the most, but they are all pretty similar to each other. I kinda like Bramblin, yet I don't think it's that interesting of a design, just brambles and floating eyes. Tumbleweed is an interesting inspiration for a Pokemon design, but I wish it wasn't Grass Ghost. Maybe Ground or Flying instead of Ghost? The same, but, I don't know, a little bit cooler? This really doesn't look any different than Bramblin. Aw shit, he be walking. Nope. When I first saw this on the map, I hated it. It's the legs. Tentacle should not be walking around like this. Look, I think Toad Skrull and Toad Skrull are stupid, but I can't deny something about Toad Skrull appeals to me. Probably the fact that Tentacruel is an incredibly good Pokemon to begin with. Toad Skrull is a bit better, but I still don't really like it. I'd give Cloth a higher rating if it wasn't for the tufts of hair on its limbs and head. They just don't look right. It's a rock-type crab. Cool. But it looks like it'd be part water or something. I really like the idea of basing a Pokemon on spicy peppers, but Capsicid's design doesn't really do it for me. Capsicid is a neat idea, but I think it's kinda ugly. Scovillain's a bit better thanks to the green and red contrast, but not by much. Though I will say, the name is perfect. The grass fire type for a hot pepper Pokemon is such a nice idea, but I'm not too keen on the design itself. I know it's gross, but does anyone else think Relor's mud ball looks kinda tasty? It looks like a donut hole with sprinkles, and it's making me hungry. A uh, dung beetle? I mean, interesting choice, but I'm not a fan. Rapska is pretty awesome. I love the color palette, and with its bug psychic combination, it's a great mix of cute and elegant. It's a bit more interesting, but still not great in my opinion. Cute, but not particularly interesting. It's like... an egg, I think? Espafra is too weird for me, sorry. Love that dyed Edna Mode hairstyle, though. I normally kind of like some abstract Pokemon designs, but Espathra looks hideous in my eyes. Not bad. It's just a little baby. With a big hammer. Big hammer not pictured. When Tinka Tink gets tough, Tinka Tuff gets going. This design isn't spectacular, but Tinka Tuff helped me through a lot of the early game with its fairy steel typing. The big ass hammer is a plus, but I can't say I care for the hair that much. I think Tinkaton is actually kinda cute, though this should not be nearly as fast as it is. As much as I hate to admit it, this recolored and elongated Diglett actually doesn't look bad at all. Okay, this is just a Diglett. They really shouldn't have just made this Diglett. Same with Wug Trio, although I just wish this and the other copycat Pokemon had a more unique design rather than aping off of pre-existing creatures. And I don't think making them red is any better. 
Great name, great concept, unfortunately just a good design. When a Pokemommy and a Poke Daddy fall in love, a Bombardier drops an egg on top of them in the daycare center, and that's where new Pokemon come from. Even though it's just a dolphin, dolphins are great, and it's high time they made a dolphin Pokemon anyway. It took far too long for Game Freak to add a dolphin, having missed the perfect opportunity in Alola to do so, but Finizen is just the perfect dolphin Pokemon. I love the idea of Palafin becoming a buff hero, but I think the design of the hero form itself is a bit too silly. I do prefer it over the zero form though, because, well, it's not just Finizen with a tattoo. While the zero form is just Finizen, very good, the hero form just isn't that great, and looks almost like a joke to me. I prefer Zero Form, obviously. Am I the only one who thinks Varum is really cute? Props for making a car engine look actually kind of adorable. It's not bad, but I'm a bit surprised it took this long to make a car Pokemon, when Pokemon like Porygon and Rotom already exist. They lost me a little bit by making it not as cute, and it's not a great design, though I do love how ridiculous the Starmobiles are, so it gets a pass. Okay, this just looks funnier than Varum, and both of them have great names for their designs. Cyclizar is fine, just a little too bland for me personally. Okay, this design actually slaps. I'm not sure what it is specifically about this, but it just works for me. Orphworm's a silly little guy, and unfortunately not outstanding in my opinion. I'm not a huge fan of this design, but the fact that it punches things with its, like, six fists is funny. Glimmit looks a lot more like an item than an actual creature, and honestly, I find it very boring. Glimmit is a very weird design, and I'm not so sure what it's trying to be, but I guess I don't really dislike it. Definitely an improvement, and less boring, but my previous criticism applies for Glimora as well. Never in 100 guesses would I have thought this or Glimmit were rock poison type. I'd have guessed every combination regarding water, fairy, psychic, or dragon first. Far from the best dog Pokemon, but Grievert is still a good little boy nonetheless. The dog is dead, and we're at like three domestic dog designs for this generation, which is a bit much for me. Houndstone, pal, you gotta get that underbite checked out. It's mostly just a bigger Grievert, but the tombstone head ornament is kinda funny. It's probably my love of flamingos that makes me rate Flamigo this high, because otherwise it's a very basic design. Flamigo no es amigo, pero es solo un flamenco. Okay, it's another cute sphere, but they made it like a hundred times bigger, so I don't know, I like it more. A land whale Pokemon is a real cool idea I thought would be reserved for a fossil, but I'm not a fan of the baby-like features of this design. What if Cetaudel, but bigger? If Cetitan was longer like Wailord is, I think I'd really like this design, but as it stands, it's a mostly alright Pokemon. Just a bit too intricate for me, but the Ponyard line is pretty cool, so hey, it's good in my book. It's a pretty busy design, and evolving this was a bit of a pain, but it's not all that bad. I don't think the pink fins fit perfectly with the rest of Veluza's design, but otherwise I think it's a really cool Pokemon. I don't quite get the psychic typing, but something about this Pokemon sticks out to me. Maybe it's the fact that Paldea didn't introduce too many new water types, and having not picked Quaxly, my options were kind of limited in new choices. Something about catfish really appealed to me, and Dondozo, being a catfish, naturally hits that for me as well. This is 8 feet shorter than Wailord, but nearly half the weight. We got another contender for floatiest Pokemon. Sushi Fish Boy is cute, but not really spectacular. I like the curly form because it actually has a two-toned palette, unlike the others, which are too plain. It's just a little sushi thing, and I think I like Droopy form the most because of the name. It doesn't lie, Tatsuguri do be Droopy. The spikes and red tufts actually make this ancient Dawn fan look pretty cool. It's a more visually interesting Dawn fan, but it's still a Dawn fan in the end. Damn Jigglypuff, who did your hair? It is looking stylish as heck. This looks like it wants to speak to the manager. Brute Bonnet takes a Pokemon I only sorta like and makes it kinda beautiful in a way. I actually really like the green and brown frills. What ecological niche could a Pokeball disguise provide for Brute Bonnet? Or does this confirm that Pokeball designs are based off of ancient Amoongus? I love Mischievous, but this just makes Mischievous look kinda dumb. 
I'm not huge on the design compared to Mischievous, but I'm more annoyed that it took me literal hours to find duplicates of this Pokemon for trading when I found my first in a total of 30 seconds. We haven't gotten to Volcarona yet in this series, but damn, this is such a good redesign that looks both cool and pretty. Gen 5 spoiler alert, I love Volcarona. And while this is still a great design, I don't think it's as amazing as its descendant. Okay, this one's pretty damn stupid. Ah, yes, the mystical ancient magnets. A very odd choice for an ancient Pokemon to design. Huh. Eh, not for me. This looks like a boss from a Pokestar Studios movie. I already don't care that much for Delibird, and this future version doesn't improve it in any way. It's neat that Game Freak is giving some love to Delibird, and I'm glad that this wasn't an ancient Pokemon, which would imply that Santa existed millions of years ago. What if Hariyama, but designed by Dr. Eggman? Nope, not a fan. Maybe I don't like that these designs are just robotic versions of current Pokemon, compared to Scarlet's more animalistic designs that differ quite a bit. Uh, it's a bit too sharp for me, sorry to say. Iron Jugulus is fine, I guess? Maybe it's because Hydreigon already takes some inspiration from artificial sources. It's not quite as good as the past counterpart, but it's still pretty nice. This one looks fine at least, though the poison type surprises me a lot with this one. The 3D model doesn't do justice to Iron Thorns, that's actually a pretty solid robotification of Tyranitar. Okay, this one just is a Pokestar Studios boss. Like this is legitimately just MT from Pokestar Studios. I'm not exactly sure what Frigibax is based off of, but it looks kinda cute. It's not that bad, but it's also not that good either. Something is a little bit off about Arctabax to me, but it's still a very solid design and avoids that second stage weirdness for the most part. It's certainly different than Frigibax, but I still am pretty indifferent to it. I almost want to give Baxcalibur the 10, yet I held off it because I think the smoother body shape does this a disservice. If I went back to the more angular designs of earlier generations, it'd easily be worthy of a perfect score. This reminds me too much of Duraludon and it's neither intimidating nor friendly enough compared to other pseudo-legendaries. Making a Pokemon out of a Mimic is a cool idea, yet I just don't care for how Gimme Ghoul looks. It's a unique design that kinda reminds me of Yamask and Kafagrigus, but running around trying to collect its coins was not fun. I don't get how you arrived to this from Gimme Ghoul, and honestly, I wouldn't like it even if I did get it. I wish it kept the treasure chest, like how Kafagrigus possessed a coffin, but this is... All right, I guess. It's great to see a nature spirit-like design here, and while it isn't a superb creature, I do think it looks unique to say the least. It's a snail, but not an interesting one. Well, this is an interesting little creature. It looks amazing, but not exactly Pokemon-like, and I like that very design. This is just Tai Lung from Kung Fu Panda. Not a fan of this one. It's not bad, I guess, and I think we need more deer-slash-elk-slash-moose-inspired designs in Pokemon. Damn, the eyes on Chiyu really ruin it. They're way too distracting from what's otherwise a good Pokemon. A fire goldfish is an interesting idea, I guess, but nothing about this speaks to me as being legendary. This one's doing a bit too much, but I can't deny that it's a pretty cool remix of Salamence. I think this design would be better if the wings were truly feathered like Ho-Oh's wings are, but it's still interesting that this is based off of Mega Salamence. I guess it's a little bit better than Gallade? Maybe? This one is alright, and I guess this is also interesting that it's based off of Mega Gallade and Gardevoir. I like Koraidon a little bit more between the two, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of the mascot legendaries this time. This is probably the first generation where I had no strong feelings one way or another regarding box legendaries, which is usually how I make my choices when picking a game. Karidon basically being a big dog increases its score just a little, though. While I personally like the colors on Maridon more, the body design brings it down to just below Karidon. Again, I had no strong feelings one way or another with Karidon and Maridon, and basing solely on design, I'm not a huge fan of Maridon. Alright, that's every Pokemon from Gen 9 rated. As per usual, let's take it over to Dribson for the breakdown. Thanks, Cloud. First, let's update our running totals for each generation. Cloud's average score for Gen 9 was 6.45, 
placing it above Gens 1 and 4, but below Gens 2 and 3. But my average score was 5.94, easily my lowest so far. Of all 105 new Pokémon slash Paldean forms from this generation, we gave 27 of them the same ranking, most of which we agreed were either good or middling. Next, let's look at our total score counts for Gen 9, and between Cloud and myself, we both tended to rate pretty similarly. Most of our ratings fell between 5 and 8, though I gave out more ratings below those numbers and Cloud gave out more ratings above them. And like always, here's a quick recap of our Gen 9 scores. Now it's time, as usual, for the awards for this generation to celebrate the top and bottom Pokémon from the Paldea region. First up is the award for best and worst starters based on the combined average scores of each starter line. The Perfect Partner Award goes to the Skeledurge line, even with our overall dislike of Crocolar, Fuecoco and Skeledurge more than made up for it. And the Atrocious Ally Award goes just barely to the Miascarada line, though the Quaquevo line was only one point ahead. Moving on to the awards for best and worst legendary Pokémon based on our combined scores. Our mythical masterpiece this time is Xian Pao, a very striking design that absolutely deserves this award. And our fantastical flop award goes to Ting Lu, which I didn't care for and Cloud really didn't like. Now we have the awards for best and worst types, and Gen 9's Excellent Element award goes to Fire, the first time it's won after having been in the top 5 types for previous generations. And the Catastrophic Category Award goes to Rock for the second time, not surprising as it's been in our bottom five types every single time. Then we've got the awards for Best and Worst Glow Up, determined by finding the biggest score differences between one evolution to the next. However, we do want to mention that in the case of King Gambit, we haven't rated its previous evolutions yet, so this award is tentative until we finish the Gen 5 rating video. For now, the Terrific Transformation Award goes to Skeledurge, improving from Crocolore by a factor of 7. And believe it or not, the Metamorphic Mistake Award goes to Crocolore, who lost 8 points off of Fuecoco. This is not only the first time that a starter Pokémon has taken the Best or Worst Glow Up Award, but it's also the first time a single evolution line has taken both awards. Moving on, we have the award for the Pokémon that Dripson and I disagreed on the most. With a difference of 6 points, we have two contentious Critter winners this time, Quaquavel and Graphii, both of whom I really liked and Dribson did not in the slightest. Our next award is for the Best and Worst Antagonists, aka the Best Rival, Gym Leader, Elite Four Trainer, Champion, or Villain Team Leader based on the team's average combined score. The rules are the same as always, duplicate Pokémon only count once, where judging on final teams only where applicable, trainers must have at least one new Pokémon, Super bosses only count if they're fought exclusively in the post game, and no battle facility exclusive trainers, which in this case means no Academy Ace Tournament trainers. Unfortunately, since we're skipping ahead past Gens 5 through 8, a lot of these trainers have teams that we can't fully judge just yet. Only 8 of Scarlet and Violet's trainers use Pokémon we have all the ratings for, so once we're all caught up with the rest of the series, we'll make sure to revisit this award and see if anything changes. As of making this video though, the Big Bad Boss Award goes to Team Star Fairy Leader Ortega, thanks to both his Doxpun and Gang of Fairy types from previous generations that we gave higher scores. And the Bad Bad Boss Award goes to Professor Turo, a consequence of our lower ratings for the future Paradox Pokémon. It should be noted that Turo's battle is Violet exclusive, and if we're only considering dual game fights, then Atticus, the Team Star Poison Leader, gets this award instead. And before we move on to the special honors, we are introducing a unique award for Gen 9 to recognize the best and worst Paldean regional Pokémon. For our purposes, we're including Paldean exclusive forms, which is really only Paldean Wooper and Tauros, plus the Paradox Pokémon since they're based on previous designs. The Pleasant Paldean Award goes to Slitherwing, which is based on a Pokémon we both really love, so that's not a surprise. 
And the pitiful Paldean Award goes to Iron Hands, a cheap robotic imitation of a classic design. Now let's get on to the Special Recognition Awards for the Best, Worst, and Best Worst Pokémon. The Hall of Fame hosts Pokémon who have a perfect combined score of 20, and Doc's Bun joins the ranks this time, the third dog to do so. The Hall of Shame is for those who have a perfectly bad combined score of 2, but I didn't hand out a single one this time, so no one was eligible. And the Hall of Tame is awarded to Pokémon who got a score of 5 from us both, and that honor goes to Gimme Ghoul, Chi Yu, and Iron Valiant. So that's every Pokémon from Gen 9 rated. I profess that after Black and White, my experience with the mainline Pokémon series besides Scarlet and Violet is zilch. I haven't been there to see the franchise evolve past the late 2000s, and I'm only slowly really starting to see what the series looks like in the modern day. I say that as a preface to my thoughts on this generation overall, which are that, well, it's more Pokémon. There's a lot of creatures that I love from this generation, and some that I don't care for. Same for the games, actually. There's things I like about Scarlet and Violet, and things I don't, and it all just averages out to just kind of being okay. It may take some time for me to digest Gen 9 to see what I think about it, but as of right now, it's about what I expected. Generation 9 was one I was excited for, as I've tried to go in blind to new Pokémon generations since Gen 7, watching only the first one or two trailers, then avoiding any info I can. I only saw the first trailer this time, seeing the teasers of the starters and that the region was based off of Spain. However, when playing through the numerous graphical and technical, let's call them hiccups, I was thoroughly underwhelmed, going so far as to describe my expectations low and hardly met, if at all. I was considering placing this as worse than Sword and Shield, which I am a staunch critic of, since Sword and Shield were playable, but entirely by the books, whereas Scarlet and Violet felt very much four steps forward, seven steps back for most of my time playing. So while I was not a fan of playing through 98% of the game, the last hour of the main story was the best finale sequence Pokémon has had, with the sole exception of Black and White. In the end, it's still a Pokémon game, and if you're on the fence on getting it, or picked it up and put it back down, I do think it's worth it to go through. I still think Legends Arceus is the best Pokémon on the Switch though, but if the next games are on the system without nearly as many issues, I think this formula can bring the series to heights not seen since the DS days. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, then give it a like, leave a comment, and make sure to subscribe and click that bell to see when new videos go live. What's your favorite Pokémon from Gen 9? Let us know down below! We will be going back to tackle Gen 5 next, probably sometime in either February or March. Until next time, this is Cloud Connection and Dribson signing off. Catch you later!